The Ishizu cards are here and while we are still waiting for tier limits, which will combine with the Ishizu cards into a tier 0 bullshit deck, let's talk about the things you can already do with the Ishizu cards as well as some card options you might be considering when you want to use them right now. So here it is a quick idea sheet. Now I'm not telling you to go ahead and craft all of these. These together will surely make a deck but don't craft all of them. Just gonna give you some ideas while also going over some of the cards. So the Ishizu package, we have Keldo, the Sacred Protector, Medora, the Sword Oracle, Kelbeck, the Ancient Vanguard, and Agido, the Ancient Sentinel. Now, usually you will talk about these in two categories. We have the Shufflers, which is Keldo and Medora, because their effect allows you to shuffle cards from either player's graveyard back into the deck. That's why they are the Shufflers. And we have the Millers, because these will allow you to mill five cards from the top of the deck, so send them to the graveyard from uh, both players when they are sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard. So when Kelbeck or Agido is sent to grave, you will mill both players. This means a graveyard strategy will become really, really, really insane because suddenly you have just a bunch of cards in your grave out of nowhere. There are cards like Chaos Ruler, which is banned in the TCG. It is a relatively hard to make card usually, and these cards just do that for free. So that's why these are so insane. So these are the Millers, Kelbeck and Agido, and Keldo and Mudora are the Shufflers. So their effects here, Keldo says you can discard one other Earth Fairy Monster, special summon discard from your hand. Then add one Exchange of the Spirit or a card that mentions it from your deck to your hand. Now the important part here is a card that mentions it, because all of these cards actually mention Exchange of the Spirit. So Keldo will allow you to discard a Earth Fairy from your hand, which is all of them, and then grab a another one. Now this doesn't use your normal summon so you can still normal summon the other one you search and overlay them into a rank 4. That's why you saw when Ishizu cards were popular in OCG and TCG a lot of people were playing Xyzes that have rank 4 because they are really easy to make. Again we'll go over some of the good ones later. Now what's also really sick is that when Keldo and Medora also has this special summon effect by the way when Keldo or Medora activate their effect to special summon they are sending these other two from the hand to the graveyard and so they will trigger and mill both players. This way, if you have no way to start your place, which you know all your graveyard effects, but you can send, you know, an Agido or a Kelbeck to grave just with Keldo or Medora already, you have place to start with. And then if you have Keldo, you can search the other ones, overlay them, make a rank four and so forth. We've also been mentioning some traps. We have Exchange of the Spirit and Gravekeeper's Trap. I'm going to be honest, these cards are kind of cope. We saw people run them, and while when you get both out, they are incredibly powerful. Like, these are no joke when they are both out. But getting both of them out is really annoying. And in a best of one setting, where you're often gonna go second, these are just two hard bricks. So in my opinion, these are not gonna be worth it. I would not make these. As you can see, I haven't even crafted them. But they are something to consider, you know, if you wanna get really, really, really greedy. Now, I wanna really focus on the engine here. So the second effect here is quick effect. You can banish this card from your field or graveyard, then target up to three cards in any graveyard, shuffle them into the deck. This is insane because this means on your opponent's turn, if they put something important in their graveyard, you can quickly go, oh, Keldo, put it back. And basically any graveyard based strategy has a really tough time dealing with Keldo and Medora. Also importantly, the best deck right now is Runic Sprite. It's the best deck by a landslide. Don't even try to argue it. And if you shuffle back their Runic spells, Runic Fountain doesn't let them draw. So these cards basically made it the second they came out, Runic became an unplayable garbage engine. Which is crazy because right now it is the most playable, most broken engine. So that's why I personally will be building decks exclusively with these cards, even when tier is not out, purely because I want to ensure that no Runic player ever gets to have fun ever again. So, now that you have a quick intro, you know, there's TLDR, we have two shufflers, we have two millers, we get a crazy graveyard set up, they don't get to use their graveyard, and they make really solid rank fours. That is all you need to know. Now let's talk about some cards you want to be combining them with. Let's start with those rank fours. The first one is Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller is basically a card that says your opponent does not get their graveyard anymore, which is crazy because if other people start using graveyard strategies, you, if you go first, you just log them out of that with this card. So that's really, really important. In the Ishizu tier four match, you're gonna notice both players constantly making an Abyss Dweller just to try and get your opponent away from their graveyard. Now we have Exit on Night. This card says once per chain during your main phase or your opponent's battle face, if your opponent has more total cards in their hand and field than you do, you can detach one material from this card, destroy all other cards on the field, also your opponent takes no further damage this turn. So what you're basically going to be doing with this card is when you go second and your opponent has like a crazy board, you just make this 
and you wipe it away. And the thing is, they have to negate it. But if they negate this and don't destroy it, now it can just go to battle phase, attack, you make yourself a Zeus, and you wipe the board with it. So Exiton is like a lot of disruption in one card. And if you are a graveyard deck afterwards, you can still set up. So another card that you're going to be probably seeing a lot is Herald of Orange Light. This card says when your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can send this card and one other fairy monster from your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. So what does this mean? You can basically, when your opponent goes first, activate Herald of Orange Light, send these cards from your hand to the graveyard, and that way have a very, very powerful negate. But the powerful thing about it is as well that when you send this Kelbeck and Agido, you can actually already mill both players in your opponent's turn. So now if you have certain other graveyard effects that start popping off, your opponent is not going to like it. Also, if you are going, going to be sending the Keldo or the Medora, now if they are a graveyard deck, not only did you negate and destroy a monster, but you can also start shuffling their graveyard away again. So overall, Herald of the Orange Line is going to be huge. And you're also going to be seeing this a lot in the Ishizu tier mirrors next month. But even, even if you're not playing tier yet right now, because obviously you can't, we're in Master Duel, but uh, you are using these cards, I would already play the Herald purely because you're going to be negating stuff, you're going to be setting up. It's a really, really crazy card. And also it stops max C. Let's say you notice your opponent, they're making their board and you think, you know what, I'll break it on my own. And you draw your cards, you have your full hand, you start to break their board, but they go max C. You can just go Herald, pitch one of my crazy cards and just start playing. Go like, thank you for max Cing me. Now I will play with the graveyard you just gave me for free. So Herald of Orange Knight, also it's just a rare. Next we have a card, uh, Shinobi Necro. Now, why is this card going to be good in my opinion? Basically, there are two cards in Master Duel that the TCG does not have access to that uh, Master Duel does and that are crazy. So this card says we can uh, basically ignore everything except for if this card in the graveyard is banished phase up to activate an effect or buy an effect, you can special summon this card. That is the only thing you want to worry about here because what this means is that when you banish this card from the grave with Fairy Tail Snow or Chaos Ruler, it will special summon itself. And it's a level two. Now it's a level two tuner. So that means with Chaos Ruler, you get a free Baron just for having this in your graveyard. But with Snow, this can also turn into Sprite Combo. So like, I've already made some crazy piles. I'm going to be showing them on the channel as well once I get some footage because the combos are really, really cool. But so once I get some footage, you'll see that. Be sure to be subscribed for that. But so the fact that Shinobi plus Snow is basically full sprite combo just from playing with Ishizu cards is crazy. Like you can basically stop Runic Sprite from playing thanks to the Ishizus and then go, you know what? Now I'll play my own sprite game plus other graveyard stuff. That's just wild. You'll see. I I'm really excited for these types of decks. Now another card you're going to be seeing a lot of, I think, is Diviner of the Herald. So this card says, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send one fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. And if you do, increase this card's level by that monster's level until the end of this turn. So what does that mean? Right now it's a level 2 tuner, and when you normal or special it, you can send one of these Ishizu cards from the deck to the graveyard. So suddenly, this card becomes a level 6 tuner, which is really great because you're playing so many level 4 extenders, and 6 plus 4 is 10 equals Baron, but also since she just sent Kelbeck or Agido from the deck to the graveyard, you're going to be able to mill five cards. So this is like one of the best ways to start off combos with these Ishizu cards while also making like a free Baron, you know, assuming you have a level four extender. So that's another thing you're probably going to be seeing. There's also an argument to where this is a level six. You might see something like Destiny Hero Malicious being played or maybe some of the Thunder Dragons. Then you can overlay those sixes together into a Beatrice. Like, whoa, there's a lot of options here. Next, we have the Punk. Now, why are the punks interesting? Well, if you activate something like, well, first of all, normal summons Yamin or activate teleport, then if you do the combo, the punk combo, check out my punk intro if you're interested in that, you're going to be able to make a free chaos ruler. It's going to mill five cards. So you might set up these Ishizu shufflers or you might mill one of the Kelbeck millers and then that mill five turns into a mill 10 and that mill 10 might turn into a mill 15. And then you can go even crazier because of the punk cards uh, you're reviving a foxy tune, overlaying the Chaos Ruler plus the foxy tune into Zombie Vampire. That mills four more cards. Again, you're going to be maybe milling into these cards. So, like, if you play the Punk Engine in a crazy graveyard deck together with the Shizu cards, you're going to be milling so much. You will have access to the Shinobi. You will
you will have access to the fairy tale snow you will have access to baron because of that again like i have so many ideas 60 card piles and so forth but so just keep in mind you're probably gonna see some kind of punk decks together with the shizu cards we have mizuki mizuki is basically a card i put here because zombies might be a thing if you are a zombie fan i think ishizu is going to make you very happy you're basically going to be able finally to fill your graveyard with all of those zombies because zombies issue has always been they have a lot of really great graveyard effects but not many ways to get the cards in the graveyard like you're always relying on uni zombie to send something and then if they ash that your turn ends like that is so bad about zombies it's why so many people play like dangers in zombie so that's something to keep in mind there also this reminds me uh dangers exist but also curious exists so let me uh let me put that there so zombies big deal then fairy tale snow this card is probably my opinion going to be the prime reason why ishizu cards are fucking crazy because fairy tale snow is one of the most broken cards in the game ever it says if this card is normal special summoned target one phase up monster your opponent controls change it to phase down defense position so this is a book of moon but if this card is in your graveyard banish seven other cards from your hand field and our graveyard special summon this so if this is in the grave you have always access to book of mooning your opponent and a level four extender and somehow this card isn't even limited in this game so it's very possible we, we will see like a crazy 60 card deck with all of the ishizu cards that then play like snow or multiple snows and then you're gonna be milling a billion so you're gonna be able to use like a billion snows and make crazy rank four plays and big link boards and in your opponent's turn you're gonna be playing with the uh, shufflers but also with snow it's gonna be absolutely insane so yeah snow big card in my opinion again i'm not telling you to craft all of this just giving you some of the ideas and then depending on what you already have you might be able to make something really cool then a uh, punk deer note again just part of the punk combo destrudo another card that was banned for a while in the tcg then gradually came back and here in master duel it is completely unlimited so if you mill this you can start doing some crazy crazy plays another consideration that that you can think about with destrudo is ancient fairy dragon so this card ancient fairy dragon gives you access to any field spell so you might be able to go like mill my destrudo and then my destrudo plus anything else makes an ancient fairy dragon again there's some things to consider there we'll see as as the the meta starts developing then punk foxy tune again part of all the punks then another engine that uh not not many people have been thinking of recently is the therions but these cards are really solid so therions are these graveyard based cards and the big issue with, with them was always that we bricked on them they are like big beefy monsters that you can't get out of your hand that really are broken when they get in the graveyard together with an argyro system if you are able to just mill a billion cards thanks to the ishizus and now you have like Argyro systems and Tyrion cards. You can get Omni negates. You can get monster negates. You can get like a bunch of drawing. You can get their broken field spell. There is a world where we see some kind of Ishizu big pile with some Tyrion cards in there as well. So keep that in mind as well. Finally, we have Foolish Burial as um in here. Foolish Burial is just going to be a way to trigger a Kelbeck or a Nagido. So if we play a bit of a more normal pile where milling five cards, you know, gets us started already, you can go like Foolish Burial, send a Kelbeck or an Agito start milling a bunch of cards grass looks greener this is another card that we don't have in a tcg haven't had in a long time this basically says mill 20 cards or mill 15 cards whatever mill a big amount of cards so if you can mill your shufflers your kelbeck agido and a bunch of these other graveyard cards that sounds potentially broke so again that's something that we will have to test but with the amount of cards in this deck that allow you to start milling i wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being really good again the Argyro system together with the tyrions and then finally teleport which is how you get your punk engine live as well well, now for the extra deck, we have um, Herald of the Arclight. Herald of the Arclight is something you can also send with a Diviner from your extra deck. And then you can search for any ritual. So maybe if we figure out some crazy ritual card, one that instantly comes to mind is Illusion of Chaos. This one right here, we might have Illusion of Chaos together with Magician Souls in this deck. Get, get rid of some spells and traps from our hand or field. That way start drawing more cards, extend. That, that might even lead into a Curious. Again, lots of options, but this is just another thing you can think of if you are playing the diviner anyway ancient fairy dragon again for the strudo chaos ruler this is going to be the big daddy again the fact that shinobi works so well with chaos ruler the punks make this card so easily there's even a world where maybe you play felice the light Sworn card this card right here says if this card is sent from your deck to the graveyard by a monster effect special summon it so the skelbeck and agido might just send it to the graveyard then you have a level four tuner together with 
all these other level 4 extenders we already spoke of, that also makes a very easy Chaos Ruler. If you are playing Lightstorms anyway, you might even play Raiden, which is once again another really easy way to get into your milling and also make a Chaos Ruler. That might mean you're also playing Charge of the Light Brigade, which means you might even mill into your Kelbeck and Agido that way. So there's a lot of things to consider here, a lot of options, but Chaos Ruler is gonna probably going to be at the heart of a lot of them. Now we have the Baron, again, was easy to make. The Exesus, we talked about the Abyss Dweller, we talked about Exiden, Exiden Knight. We have Bagushka. This is a card that's really easy to make with level 4s as well. Also really powerful, can sometimes lock down your opponent just from the start. Zombie Vampire, part of the Punk lines. Then we have Zeus. If you have a deck that makes easy rank 4s, you're obviously going to play a Zeus. And then Curious. If this deck plays enough darks, the fact that Curious can always send snow or a Kelbeck or a Guido or these is really insane. So that is something else to consider. Uh, oh, one more really interesting little play that was useful back in YCS Pasadena in the Shizu tier format was if you played Sprite Elf. Uh, let me quickly grab that here. Sprite Elf. If you played Sprite Elf and you have been milling, you can revive the Diviner of the Herald and then she will mill Shufflers. So that way you always have access to them. And now that way you can then turn the Diviner of the Herald plus a level 4 into Baron. And it was all thanks to Sprite Elf. So that was something else that was sometimes part of combos. Again, we'll see if that's here the case as well. Overall though, all I think this video should show you is that these cards are crazy. And even though right now we don't have tier limits yet, I think it's going to be useful to experiment with them anyway. Because on one hand, you're going to be finding combos that maybe the TCG and OCG didn't have access to purely because of a different ban list different meta and so forth and then you might be able to use some of them in the coming tier format and beyond that since you're making these cards anyway <laughs> to get ready for Ishizu tier well then you might as well use them right now in you know a really fun over the top way but again there's going to be a lot of profiles up on this channel once I start playing this on ladder on stream be sure to subscribe for that I will see you soon ciao